All right, hello everyone. Today is Sunday, May the 12th, <laughs> recording live out of the nation's capital. Well, not live. Um, I'm your host, Giovanni Brusto, the media mogul, and this is Pop Glitch Radio, Season 2. I'm here with um, R&B singer Smith, and later on we'll be joined by, hopefully, um, former uh, fellow Pop Glitch writer, um, Muhammad SHK. All right, so you ready to get started? I am. Good morning. Afternoon, All right. Rather. Yes. <laughs> so still, I think it what, just turned 12 over there. It just turned, yeah, it just turned noon here. All right. Um, so, uh, folks, as much as I would like to say that I've been friends with Smith for several years and I had the pleasure of bringing him on the show, um, didn't exactly happen that way. Um, we actually met briefly during a show maybe four or five years ago. I don't know if you remember this. was um, I went to see Mo Mo at um, yeah, the Howard, the Howard, Howard Theater. Theater. <laughs> yeah, so I know there was a, a brief little something, but stumbled across your Twitter and said, well, um, let me see what he's been up to. I don't even know if I was aware at the time that you were a singer. Yeah, I think I was so. just kind of like really getting started at that time. Like, you know, I was just kind of like, you know, making a little bit of headway. So, yeah, for sure. I, I can imagine that. Yeah, and I mean, clearly, even though it's just a little bit of headway, it must have been something because I think that you moved to LA was it the next year um yeah I moved to LA in October of 2014 so that sounds about right okay um, maybe a year or so off but um yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah and that uh, sounds about right okay and um yeah, I, I forgot how long ago that was it wasn't as long as I thought I was thinking it was like five years ago um how has oh, it yeah, been okay, since yeah. you <laughs> how has it been since you've moved there um, I mean, it's been great. Like, you know, I think L.A. has been uh, transitional for me in quite a few different ways. But, I mean, I just keep it low-key around here. You know, I just do my thing. I still work a 9-to-5, so I go to my 9-to-5 during the day to, you know, come home and do whatever I do. So, you know, I keep it low-key. I'm like in L.A. just because for that reason I get to be, like, mad chill, low-key here. I know. I mean, a big, huge difference than being here. I've always said that D.C. is quite the quite the stuck-up city. Like, I try to have oh, yeah, some yeah. fun, but, um, you know, God, most of the time I'm like, I wish you people would take the stick out of your ass, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I could see D.C. be kind of, you know, kind of being stuck-up. I could see that. Yeah, and we're not necessarily uh, the most creative of places, so, I mean, definitely L.A. was the... LA was the better move for you. Yeah, like I'm, I'm loving LA for that reason. I definitely feel a lot, you know, a lot more creative. But I'm not really sure if that has as much to do with LA as it just does me. It could have probably been anywhere, you know, like you just leave out where where you're used to, where you're from, go to another place, experience life in a different way, and then you know it manifests itself in your work or you know just how you live. However, you know, I, I'm sure it would have happened anywhere. Right, a different um, environment kind of helps bring out your um, creativity. So first getting started, I wanted to offer condolences to the families of the 50 who were murdered and about 50 who were seriously injured in Orlando at a club where a gunman came in, um, drove an entire hour and a half to carry out a planned attack. According to his father, he said that he rode by a group of gays um, uh, not long before, um, I believe outside of the same club, and he said he was seriously bothered by it. Um, it's it's really a, a tough story. I mean, I find it very sad. I'm really not that much of a club person, but I mean, geez, who would imagine something like that happening anywhere? Um, what were your first thoughts when you heard about that? Um, I mean, I was just really, I want to say I was surprised, but I don't even know that that's the accurate way to describe the feeling. I just kind of felt like a little bit numb to it honestly speaking, just because, like, you know, we hear these stories and they're just progressively getting worse. Like, it just gets worse and worse every time. So, I mean, definitely was a bit numbing. Uh, I don't even think that I've fully processed, like, the full magnitude of it all yet. Uh, it's still kind of, like, fresh for me. So, uh, def definitely a bit numbing. Um, definitely sobering is another yeah, one I would mean, use. do tend to, I mean, it seems like it happens quite a bit, um, I mean, we just had one in California at um, at a college there. Um, I mean, it wasn't yeah. as bad, but I believe that this ranked as, like, the 
It was considered a terrorist attack, or they're looking into whether that's what they should call it, and the worst since 9-11. So um, anyone who was here during that, and I was in, in high school, I guess I kind of told my age, um, that, was, that was pretty bad. So just to hear something being placed on that same level, um, you know, that's... That's awful. And I have uh, friends, including a DJ that I work with in, um, in Fort Lauderdale, and just the number of people I know that are down there that woke up with everyone texting, asking if they were, asking if they were okay, just making sure that they weren't there, including myself. First thing I had to do was get up and check on uh, a client today. I don't think that these cases that it's as many as you know, just the media does tend to take these stories and and carry on about it, you know, for for months. I mean, I think Chicago had, it was, I don't know the numbers, I mean, but they've had hundreds of, of deaths already this year of shootings. I know it was at least 300, as I recall. Um, but it doesn't get talked about as often, so. Um, yeah. Heart goes out to those people that are there. Um I'm sorry, and this person is he's <laughs> I'm, uh, texting the other person while we were talking, so it was distracting me. Um, and look, moving along, um, former Clueless star Stacey Dash for, uh, recently released a book this week called There Goes My Social Life from Clueless the Conservative. In the book, she talks about how her mother took her to a men mental institution growing up, which tends to put a lot of uh, her words in perspective. Um, now, for anyone who's following me on social media, you may have seen that I've had quite a lot to say about the book. Um, so far, but um, before I get started, um, she might not be someone that you follow, but um, any any opinion on Miss Dash and what she might be, what she might have to talk about? Um, Stacy Dash, I mean, you know, I think she's like one of those people where it's kind of like, is she serious? Is she trolling? Like, you know, what, what's really going on right now? But <laughs> One thing that I can say, like, you know, playing devil's advocate a little bit here, like, one thing I can say about Stacey Dash is I, I respect the fact, like, I always respect a person that just says what they want to say. They speak their mind. They stick with whatever they say they're going to stick with. I think, like, a lot of people have the tendency to be wishy-washy in certain regards for whatever reason, but she just seems to be unapologetic about whatever she says and whatever she believes. And, I mean, I think there's something to be said there. I mean, I don't necessarily subscribe to her way of thinking or, like, her thought processes and things, but I do appreciate that she just kind of just says what she wants to say and she just, like, doesn't apologize for it and it just is what it is. That is true. I can go along with that. Um, I have to say so, like, that think of, it, I, think of it this way. Like, think of it this way. Like, um, another person that I, I that is kind of like along these lines is like Mimi Leaks. Like, not so much in like you know her political beliefs or whatever, but she's just like so unapologetic. Like, she says what she wants to say. She makes it clear that she's not changing it. And like you know, some people hate her. And I said what I said. Her, like. <laughs> You, she said what she said, and she's not going to change it. So it's like, you know, kind of like I think of it in that way. Like, you know, we appreciate that out of some people, but like others, when it doesn't necessarily coincide with the way we think, like we have the tendency to be like, all right, get out of here. But she just says what she wants to say. <laughs> That's true. Um, gee, I, like, I feel like I'm starting to I'm starting to feel bad. Like I have an actual nice guest on, and it's making me uh, <laughs> want to tone it down a bit. Um <laughs> I was going to revisit the uh, the the gun um, incident uh, with the other person um, because I totally had like a tirade in my head and I was like I just <laughs> wanted to wait for him. But um, my my thing with <laughs> Stacy is this: um, her book, like, there, well, first I, I'll say that for her to get into uh, political commentary, um, I think it's good. Like I. Love seeing people progress in their career and try different things. Um, it's, it's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's an election year, and then plus people get to have, you get to voice your opinion, and that's fine. Um, so when she first started um, on Fox News, uh, I think a couple years ago, um, she kind of stammered through. She wasn't, um, kind of, she's very kind of deer in headlights. And I was like, it's okay, she just got started. Give her a little time. 
and now it's been four years since she came out from it. Romney, and I'm like, God, like you are, you yourself said you're not working, and I just, I mean, for someone who's not doing anything, I feel like you could at least make a little bit of an effort to sound like you know what you're talking about. I don't right. mind what you're saying, but I guess kind of being a, a little bit of a, um, just a little bit of a media person that I, um, you. Again, she just seems to be in over her head. Um, they'll ask her a question, and she might answer it, and she'll come back for a follow-up, and um, blah, blah, nothing. Um, so there's that. Like, I, I just wish that she would clean things uh, up a little bit just to be a little better. Um, also, the items that were in the book, um, her mother giving her cocaine at 16, um, burying her dad's drug paraphernalia in the ground, ripping the IV out of her arm on the abortion <laughs> table, shooting um, shooting the guy, or, or her, um, w- would have been a, a rapist. Um, it's, that was really a lot. Um, and I don't want to necessarily say that it might not be true, but... Um, I don't know. I do know on the production side that uh, the book was pushed back a year. So that's it's a possibility um, that it was like, hey, or at least I've heard the manuscript was crap and um, it was sent back and I guess all these additions came in. Um, but to make a long story short, I know that she went on Wendy Williams a few years ago and she announced that she had a reality show. And as soon as the show aired or that um, episode aired, VH1 called and said, no, you don't. You have a, you had a pilot and it wasn't picked up. Um, I don't know if you have, uh, I guess, being in LA, you might have some acting friends. Um, generally, yeah. if you shoot a pilot, it's kind of something that you would keep to yourself because it's a possibility it might not actually go through and, you know, yeah. you can face embarrassment kind of like she did. Um, so, um, and, and another issue, she mentions that she wasn't working or she's not working and no one wants to hire her after coming out as a Republican. And the issue I have with that is, I don't know when we last saw her working even before that. I know it's been at least a couple years, um, since she's been in something like single ladies started maybe five years ago that was like in 2011 i think and you know i think that's just weird i think it's just weird because it's like you know she says things like that you know like i came out as a republican like i mean really that's not like who cares there's plenty of republicans (laughs) there's plenty of people that you that you that you know we'd be surprised to know are republicans but like you know that that probably didn't have as much to do with it as she wants to make it seem i think that she's just probably really difficult to work with and you probably know that was part of what i did here um for single ladies the stories around that time was that she was difficult to deal with and um so she was off the show. There was that, and there was some other film. There was, uh, I forgot the name of it, um, the following year, same story. And the excuse that she gave for why she left Single Ladies, she said that it was affecting her schedule and raising her child. Um, for someone who's not working, that was pretty much the biggest thing that she would have been on uh, as far as television show in God knows when. So I hardly believe that an out-of-work actress is going to turn down a gig because it's affecting your parenting. Now, that could have been the, the story that you came up with them, and you all decided to publicly make it look like it was an amicable um, split. But, uh, yeah, I hardly believe that. And she talks about people needing to um, work harder. She said that um, she thinks that, gender inequality and pay is an excuse and to work harder. So my thing is that if you feel that you're not being hired because of your political belief, then I think you should take your own advice and work harder. Yeah, Other people have told that. me but see, that but mm-hmm. listen, listen I mean to if in fact that, that is the reason. I don't believe that that is the reason I'm saying just take 
just using your own words against you. Take your own advice. And you shouldn't use that as an excuse. Listen to the troll-like quality of those statements, though. Like, it's just really, like, you know, like, that's, what, like, people that just troll to just, like, get reactions, like, they're, they're just, like, random, like, subjects, <laughs> like, one really doesn't have anything to do with the other. Like, what are you really even talking about right now? Like, you know, it's just, like, I just feel like she's trolling, and, like, those type of people really don't get much, much for me attention-wise, because it's, like, you know, what are you even talking about right now? Like, <laughs> I'm, right. People get like so up in arms about it, but I'm just like you know, it's just kind of like that weird aunt that you have to just be saying her <laughs> stuff, and you're just like, oh okay, you know, you just like kind of like nod your head and smile, and then when she leaves, you're like, you know, what was that about? It's weird. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and the other thing is that you can actually debate, like it can be a policy debate on uh, on gender pay inequality because it's actually been said to technically kind of not be true because w- women tend to choose jobs that. Um, just the fields they tend to go into pay less because they offer the ability to, you know, take uh, maternity leave and ex- various other types of extended leave. So anyway, that's just that's that argument. So, but no one is going to say that gender inequality is an excuse. Like no one would excuse that or say, you know, or to try and justify it. That that's just stupid. Um, yeah. <laughs> And, and, I mean, they have her on for star power. Um, She hasn't really said much of substance with the exception of, you know, the occasional headline of, you know, people need to go and pee in the bushes or or Obama doesn't give a (laughs) shit, (laughs) which got her suspended. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I I was watching, like, what had happened. She's like, Obama doesn't give a shit about such and such. I was like, what? Where did that come from? Like, I, you know, even about? even for Fox, you can't talk like that. Um, yeah, well, I guess she was, then she learns. Yeah, uh, like I said, she she has the potential. I mean, she's, she's a pretty woman. <laughs> she does bring in, you know, if, if you want to go the route of the token black person, then fine. But let the token black person actually be smart. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and if you don't know, you can easily, I mean, she has people around her, so you can practice, again, you know, kind of learn the ideology, et cetera. I mean, Bill O'Reilly was kind of poking fun at her. He asked uh, her, you know, why are you supporting Trump? And she said he's going to make America great again. That is not not an excuse. (laughs) I mean, it's not a reason. It's really Um, not. What does that even mean? And... Even as personally I do support him, it's not – even for black people, that's, that phrase doesn't really resonate well because to them it's like, you know, again, when was it great to begin with? When was it ever great for – yeah, yeah. At what point was it great? Right. Um, for us, that is. So to hear for a repeat, us, that is. <laughs> blah. And even he looked, yeah. at, he, was, he looked at her and he was like, he said, you're socialized. You don't have a socialized. He said, oh, nobody buys that. Look at you. No one believes that you don't have a social life. Um, you know, yeah, it's just when you say stupid things on television, um, <laughs> that's what happens to your social life. This is what happens. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, her Stacey, I, I wanted to, I wanted to get it together. And she's all the best. She, Stacey died. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is on this advisory board. Like, I think she's heading a pack where she says that she's going to get black people to vote for Trump. Um, I would really love to know how that's going to happen. I think that we all saw her little Oscars performance when she came out and whispered, I mean, and wished everyone the happy Black History Month. Black History Month. That was really weird, right? (laughs) That was really weird. There's no explanation for it. I still don't understand what happened. It I don't think like it was sitting through somebody <laughs> just scratching the chalkboard. Like I just, it was so awkward. That was really bad. And then afterwards, that was bad. yeah, she said that she was going to be in charge of some, or, or on stage, she said she was going to be in charge of this African American outreach program. And we were like, really? You know, again, scratching our heads. And I, then they took it further. Like it was this, uh, the YouTube videos were were released of like her first day on the job. I still don't know whether this was fact or fiction. That's what's so sad about it, that you that people don't take you 
seriously enough that when you actually try and make a, a career move, that it still looks like a joke. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I forgot <laughs> about that. Yeah. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah, quite the... Speaking uh, of which, like, before before we mm-hmm. started, I um I saw that she had posted regarding the, the tragedy in Orlando, and she had, like, posted about it. And um, I guess the, the shooter, uh, Omar Martin, he, I guess, was, like, a registered Democrat. Yes. Um, they searched him or whatever, and they found that he's, like, a registered Democrat. And she's saying, like, you know directing this post towards President Obama, like, you know, saying that this Muslim terrorist is, like, has voted for you. Like, are you happy? Like, this is weird. This is weird. Ooh. It's, like, it's like trolls, right? You know, I'll say that for this, for partisan's sake, I, I do, when these things happen, everyone tends to ju- come out and say, oh, I bet it's a gun-toting Republican. Like, that's always where it goes. Oh, it's one of you gun nuts. So, um, I actually did make the point about the the person being a Democrat, but, like, I mean, you have to be remotely respectful. Um, I can be a tad bit tone deaf, but, uh, yeah, all of that in directing it at the president, (laughs) president, like, less than six hours later or whatever is totally uncalled for. Weird, right? For anyone to have have done, but... What 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 would I have expected? I mean, I'm also told that, you know, before she goes on air, the lady gets her her notes or her little briefing by her 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 publicist, which is fine. You know, I mean not everyone is necessarily uh lucky enough to have one, but lady, right. like I said, you know, can you can you kind of try and, and, and something else. Her statement about um getting rid of Black History Month and black um films and in black television. Um you're black and um <laughs> a working That's entertainer so in LA. Um what is your <laughs> how do you feel about being told that there's no need for a BET or or um these black media companies? I mean, are you in her words, she feels that you're voluntarily separating yourself, that um, that it's like, um, you know, we're doing our own segregation, our own professional segregation. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that uh, every, every people group should have some type of representation in the media, you know, and I think that, I mean, I think it's just absurd, honestly. I mean... Where does that even come yeah, from? Kind of I'm saying, like, I just feel like she just she just trolls. Like, she just finds like weird ways to like incite like conversation, and it's just like you know that's the kind of thing. Like I said, I don't listen. Like when I heard that she said that, I was just kind of like, okay, like you know, next. Like I didn't make tweets about it, or because I'm just like, you know, that's so stupid. Like, what is she even talking about? What is she talking about right now? I think that she just you know really does a good job of like. Like whatever the purpose is, like I think she just does a good job of like pissing people off by just saying weird stuff, like stuff that has no relevance. Like, what are you talking about? It's just weird. But no, I do think that we definitely should have networks like BET and like you know networks and media outlets that cater to uh, you know African American life. Because I mean, everybody else does. Everybody, right. else, like, every other people group, every other race, they have something for them. So you know equal time yeah when when i heard it you, you know i mean again these these tend to be media stories that have to be just that have to be debated etc um which no one thought of this before <laughs> but when i heard yeah, it i was like yeah i was like okay the there could possibly be a point in you know Race is an issue. Well, for one, it's it's a business, um, and I know from working in D.C. and um, it's just a lot of money to be made in uh, in keeping shit going. Like that's uh, you know whether it's being paid to protest or have rallies, et cetera. I mean, I had um, I knew someone who got fifteen grand for um, just one rally. Um, it was for something rather stupid. Uh, it was like an anti gentrification rally. Whereas others do it for free. But um, just saying it's a lot of money, policy groups, et cetera. And that's one point. But also, um, being in media, it's like people who did not 
um, get into larger companies, et cetera, um, be it Warner Brothers or whatnot, created their own, i.e. Tyler Perry. Um, you know, he wasn't getting into regular Hollywood. He created his own company, and he's been wildly successful while doing it. And she contradicted herself by constantly bashing black Hollywood. Um, she said that, um, uh, what is his name? Um, Spike Lee felt that she wasn't black enough, um, which I guess, you know, to her uh, Republican friends, probably it's like, oh, see, see, they're ostracizing her. But when it comes to casting, I mean, some, title, some roles, you have to, it's a character. You know, yeah. don't go auditioning for a ghetto character. It's just, it, it is what it is. You know, it's not, really, it's not really discriminating. You know, it's the character you're going for. There's a yeah, difference sure. between her and Taraji Henson. <laughs> um, All day. But, yes, but um, she said she recently complimented uh, Tyler Perry uh, multiple times um, on her book tour this week saying about how, you know, great that he is and, and how Medea is this warm and fun character. And I said, but you just, you just bashed black Hollywood. And who is more black Hollywood in 2016 than Tyler Perry? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just weird. Like, it's just weird. That's an open invitation like that she's leaving, leaving there for him, uh, saying, you know, oh, by the way, if you want to hire me. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, what I mean, like but, like, me. would he really... I'm pretty sure that he probably could find some type of role for her, really. I mean, it's just, I don't know. Like, I think that, I don't, I don't know. Like, I think that she had a potential to be, you know, pretty successful. Like, you know, I think that Clueless was, was Clueless, like, her first? Or, like, that was her um, first? She role, actually right? had been in, um, she'd been acting a whole decade before. I think her first um, show, she did something in 84, hmm. um, which I think I she that. was around 16 or something like that. Yeah, Um so yeah, that was a whole 11 years before. Um, and, and again, for someone... Wait, so she was 26 yeah. when she did Clueless? Yeah, she was in her late so then, 20s. Yeah. What? Playing a high school kid. <laughs> you didn't know that? Wow. I did not know that. Yeah, and like, now that you're almost saying 50. it, something vaguely... Wow. You know, I mean, now that you're saying always that, I do vaguely remember the that. Example of black doesn't crack. She's always been the example. We always talk about how amazing that she's looked over the years to play roles that she was far too old for. Get out of here! Wow. That Kanye, that uh, Kanye video, it all falls down back in '04. Yeah, or '05. Um, yeah, you know, she was near forty <laughs> at the time, oh. like thirty, wow. thirty-nine, um, and. Yeah, I mean that. You know the the wow. the girl down the street that you're following. Yeah, we generally don't picture following somebody a forty year old. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, but she wow, sure I enough was. Yeah. Okay. That makes okay. That puts some things into perspective <laughs> as well. Which is why I mean, for someone who's been in so many black shows and black music videos, you know, how are you going to bash those who gave you your money coming up? They didn't do anything to you, um, as I see it. And secondly, as someone who knows a little bit about black outreach, I mean, you have to go where people are. Where's the black audience? They're watching BET. So bashing the largest black network just doesn't work. Yeah, that You know, I mean, I, I tell people, like, okay, you want to uh, recruit black people, um, okay, Going inside of the hood and bashing Obama, who whom everyone there likes, yeah, good luck with that. And record yeah, yourself while you're doing it, because I would love to see the outcome. Not gonna work. Yeah, I, I really don't advise that for those who are listening. Please don't do that. Um, all right, moving along. Um, so Adele has been described as the Whitney Houston of this generation by Good Morning America. <laughs> oh. Um. Really? Yeah. Yes, really. <laughs> she actually was. Oh, um, wow. And when I first repeated it, I was literally destroyed, like, on the Internet, on the phone, in person. Um, it, was, it was pretty bad. Um, anyway, I've, I've never really been a fan of hers, um, and I don't really think that she's that great of a singer um, either, at least not a live one. But recently, her, uh, she's done more live performances, and so naturally they've been critiqued and brought under fire. Um, 
so and it's been brought under fire so much so that her um when her last album came out people had said they felt that her voice was heavily edited you know kind of uh mm. mariah carey-esque um mm. still love mariah carey she's my favorite um anyway she came out on stage and it was like for all you who feel like that wasn't my voice suck my dick um which I think is a, it's a perfectly great uh, response, if you ask me. Um, yeah. So I, I was curious, um, how do you deal with criticism, whether it's feedback from a show or audition? Um, what do you do? Um, I mean, I know, it, I know it's not all love all the time. It's really not. And, I mean, it's, sometimes it's hard because, I mean, like Erica said, it's the most cliche thing to say as an artist, but, like, you know, Keep in mind that I am an artist and I'm sensitive about my ish. Like I'm very sensitive okay. about it. So, you know, I'm pre- I'm typically like, luckily, like a lot of the negative stuff doesn't get to me, and like I hear like ten positive responses to one negative. So I've been blessed to not have to deal with that so much. <laughs> but when I do hear like negative crit- criticism, if it comes from a space like if it comes from like a malicious space, then yeah, it does. It, sometimes it does like mess with me. But certain times, like you know, when I get like some you know critiques or whatever it's, it comes from like a space of somebody that is observing and they want to be helpful in some regard so like you know i try to take it in stride but it's not it's not easy at all i'm not no, I mean, to the point where i want to just uh-huh. tell anybody suck my dick but <laughs> i mean you know i guess haven't gotten there yet okay scam. i haven't gotten there yet i mean even myself um and i'm certain i'll beat myself up after uh after the show um, like I said, I just I felt like I was a little I was a little uh, taken aback because I've I've had some kind of uh, uh, fire starters um, on with me, so <laughs> I'm like ah I feel, <laughs> I'm feeling compelled to be nice for a change, um, but you know the same with me and I have I'm not an entertainer, <laughs> but I mean probably the closest I've been um, um, a choir director assistant choir director for a mega church. Um, and I'm more, most comfortable behind the scenes, like I've done show production um, and, you know, various forms of me, uh, medias and writing for different publications, et cetera. Um, right. And even with that comes a lot of criticism. And sometimes I'm just like, you know, either A, you know, the, the, the fights are above my pay grade or, which I'm sure I'll hear something for saying that, um, or <laughs> B, like, like, I'm not the actual talent, you know, like, go beat up on somebody else. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I can see I'm, that. I can see that. I mean, I'm not that sensitive. I mean, it is the business. Um, so I spend a lot of time, energy, money, et cetera, into what I do. You know, you give people opportunities. Folks tend to be unappreciative. It's, it's life, you know. Um, but I have pretty thick skin. Um but it, but again, I'm in D.C. You are, um, you know, you're in like the most superficial of, of places. You know, it, being here, like the most successful people are, are arguably the ugliest. Um, oh, <laughs> just I mean, at least in, at least in politics, it is. you know, gone are the days of the stylish Nancy Reagan, and now the the Hillary. Angry Bob is is taking over the Angry Bob pants well, I mean, slash okay. pantsuit. It needs to end. Well, we had Michelle Obama. <laughs> we had Michelle for eight. So I mean, we got we got to take that. That is that. true. That's eight. okay. We had thank Michelle you. for eight. And Michelle, she she gave it to us. Okay, I, I have to give it. I'm gonna it to I'm gonna definitely one. I'm definitely gonna miss Michelle. I'm gonna definitely miss Michelle. I'm gonna miss the Obamas, man. Oh my God, like yeah. I'll miss Michelle. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. But, um, <laughs> but I look, waiting. I mean, I, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad no, new. <laughs> um, but well, you, you know, I, I'll say this. You know, one one thing about um, the Obamas, you know, this election cycle has gotten so nasty that. Um, if anything, it at least um, it at least allows you to appreciate um, uh, Obama as a speaker and just as a communicator, 
that is. Um, yeah. Again, kind of being a communications person, um, you know, speaks well, et cetera, all, the, all those wonderful things. Even though I'm not necessarily inclined to vote for a linguist as the number one um, quality <laughs> of a candidate, this but, is in true. Compar- this is true. but in comparison, you know, he hasn't, you know, threatened to, um, you know, bomb the shit out of anything, et cetera. Right. <laughs> and get away with it. You're right. Um, they told yeah, you to play I mean, with it. we do kind of have a kind of have a, a double standard. You know, the only black person who is going to be elected was going to absolutely be the just the the top of the top for on on paper. That is. I mean, so it could have been, been another him way, way, man. It could and it could have been another way. It really could have. I don't know. Like I said, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know how much more Nigerized of a person would have been allowed, <laughs> allowed in the White yeah, that's House. True that's true, too. That's true, too. You're right about the, that. See that? Yeah. And, you know, back to the dealing with criticism, um, I mean, Lady Gaga, for instance, said that she had contemplated um, – Suicide in so many words. And after her last album, or after Art Pop, um, did so bad and there was such criticism over it. Um, which, by the way, it's, it's interesting how labels send out um, cease and desist orders to, to stories a lot. Um, the last time I saw things disappear off the Internet was uh, Beyonce's B-Day, when there was a lot of controversy around the release of the album. I go back, I can't find any of these stories. Then again, it was two years ago. Okay, wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, so uh-huh. Giovanni, please, re- please, please refresh my memory on that because I vaguely remember that happening. Uh, what B day or? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so first, I remember what happened with that. So, uh, well, for the, for the Gaga one, um, there's a story about her kind of talking about suicide, and I can't find it again. I know what I saw. Oh. You know, I spend a lot of time going through stories, etc., and they get reposted in forums and whatnot, and it's gone. Because I thought about it. someone told me no, she didn't, and I was like, yeah, she did. Like I remember reading. <laughs> I don't. I don't oh. mention anything unless it is sourced, because people will attack the shit out of me if I do anything else. Um, so I mean that was that was really bad. I mean Gaga is such an amazingly talented person, and for all the things that get said about her, I would, you know, I hate to hear, but anyone talk about offing themselves. But d- during uh, when B Day came out, what was it that I heard? Um, oh, that it was all released and it was recorded in a week and a half, two weeks. And her dad heard it and said, "Shit, go back in the studio." Like that was <laughs> that was um, had gone around a few <laughs> times, and there was no evidence of it. <laughs> At all, it's just oh, how awful I, I remember that. that the team um, and that the that some songs were sent out to some early markets, and they didn't like it, and they all hated it, um, and I couldn't find any of it. Oh. You know, just a few years later. Wow. I mean, because I know takedown take down requests go. You know, they go around because I've gotten them <laughs> before, and I have actually well, been I taken down. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and I remember. Uh, uh, this is uh, interesting. Back when that happened, before her album came out, this was when like LimeWire was like, on a yes, like, I destroyed and I some getting, computers like, with that. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I remember like getting a bunch of the songs off of B Day off of LimeWire like two weeks before it came out. And they were early. Oh um, wow, they were early. Um, I can't think of what the word <laughs> what the word is, but they weren't finished. They were like unmastered. Yeah, they were like uh, unma- pieces yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Because those don't, I mean, it, since yeah. those programs are gone, we don't get to hear early uh, music as much or unreleased pieces because I have, I had um, Britney Spears' album, whatever that was, in 07, I think, Blackout. Um, yeah. I downloaded it illegally and I would play it every day. And then one day I just listened to the actual um, album. Um, the legal album, and it sounded completely different. <laughs> yep. I mean, the mixing That's and mastering was completely different. You yeah. know, they, they leaked yeah. the early, the early parts, and that's also why. I mean, I'm glad they got rid of it because that that definitely changes your opinion of a song when you hear something before it's fucking finished. <laughs> well, yeah, that's I thought yeah, the album sure. was it was very. 
Um, I mean, it was very digital. I mean, the, the beats were kind of, I thought, stagnant throughout, but I liked the overall direction she went in, Brittany, that is. And then again, I listened to it later, and I was like, no wonder you thought it was kind of boring, because you didn't hear the finished product, duh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that's so yeah. interesting. I forgot all about that. But yeah, Adele, I mean, she, yeah, like, she, I mean, I feel like when you're She's also kind of gotten Adele. to the point that she can tell people to That's what I'm saying. Uh, like, when you've gotten, <laughs> yeah, when you're as successful as she's been, like, I mean, anything, you can, you can pretty much say whatever. In sidebar, that's kind of my defense of, of, of Donald Trump, um, just that, I know folks don't like hearing it. When you've reached a level of success, just in general, whether it's her or him, you do kind of get to say what you want. And who's going to do something about it? Who is going to go Aww. and shut him? I mean, you know, shut him up. Now, it's to an extent because he put all his money into the first half of his campaign. And, well, he won. So he, every, in the end, everyone got what they wanted. Well, now he's like, I'm not putting up any more money. He needs the money. So now you see someone who... It's leveraged. He can't say what he wants to because all these people are going to pull out their support as they um, have been off and on doing. Um, so he's met the, uh, the proverbial who's going to stop him. But um, I am just honestly <laughs> tired of just – I'm just going to be honest with you right now. I am honestly just tired of seeing and hearing Donald Trump. Like, I just do not want to see or hear him anymore. It's like a joke that has gone on long enough. All the media, it's um, it's a lot. And I, I'll say that he's said um, and done um, a number of things over the last year. Um, in part... His um, opponent, Hillary, they both have extremely high unfavorables, um, and she doesn't make any <laughs> she doesn't make any slip ups, which is odd. Like, no, the whole country hates them both. I mean, they genuinely yes. dislike both candidates. We've not been there before, but she doesn't yeah. make these types of statements because, I mean, it's it's something to be said about being conditioned um, and media trained. Um, it's not easy, and she's been in it for years, and so naturally she knows all of what to say and what not to say, and she gets to be ambiguous in her points, which is why everyone knows that she doesn't stand for anything, because she gets to jump on both sides of the same issue. But it's different. She still didn't order anyone to get beat up. Um, <laughs> but, right, yeah. <clears throat> Trump does that. Yeah, right. He accepts every... Because even... I'd say like, even with regards to what you were saying regarding like just I wasn't getting supposed to go there, up. but I did. <laughs> Let's say. Oh, like, I, think the same thing you said. I know, right? <laughs> but it's the same thing. Like I feel like as I feel like she is successful. Uh I mean she's definitely popular enough where she really could say whatever she wanted to say and probably get away with a lot of it, but it's just kinda like, you know, who says things like this? Right. Which is why I understand the connection with Stacey Dash. Well, Donald Trump thing is the same. Yeah. Um, the, the, part of the thing with him is that um, he accepts every single media request that he gets. Um, and when you do it, and even from people that, that, that clearly don't like him, like he's been told, um, or uh, many commentators said, I would have never gone on a show with so-and-so. Or like, why would you do that? That's suicide. But he accepts every single request. And some say, oh, he wants the attention. Well, you're running for office. Like, you should be reaching people. Um, I have more of an issue with those who avoid interviews. But if you accept every request that you get, say 100 interviews versus someone's 20, you're going to have a goof-up uh, in there. Um in the process, and we're kind of in a year that people are just so unhappy, re they would rather burn down the house and start over again from scratch than to deal with the, to deal with the same old. But um, I'm going to say something I've probably never done before, and I'm going to say I'm going to wish them both, uh, wish them both well over the no. next 12 months. No? No. <laughs> no. no. Okay. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. All right. I. That, I that's how I got out of the last topic. I'll give you that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I need to move along. So, uh, former One Direction singer Zayn Malik 
was scheduled to perform uh, last night in London Summertime Ball. Um, he pulled out the last minute right after flying there, like going out of the country, went over there, and he said he was experiencing the biggest anxiety of his career. He thoroughly apologized. He said he was going to try and make it up to his fans if he could. Um, Smith, have you ever experienced anything like that? Any pre-show anxiety attacks? Do you um, do you get butterflies or get nervous before going on stage? I do. I mean, a I, okay. So when I saw the story, I you know definitely was on both sides of it because as an artist, I have absolutely experienced like super high levels of anxiety like I just did a show when I went home to Baltimore like last week and I remember like it was like 10 minutes before okay. I was supposed to go on and I just kept having this feeling like you know I don't want to do this I want to go home like I just want to go home I don't want to do this so I like oh, no. felt it but then also I'm a consumer as well like you know independent of being an artist like I still consume music at a high very high rate I still right. do shows and stuff and I would have been pissed I would have been pissed. I hate that. I hate that when artists pull out at the last minute. I hate that. I would have been pissed. And, you know, it, when he, some, when you're at the level of him, I, you're on his level. Like, yeah. There is, like, you know, tons of people waiting for you. Like, you know, I would have been That's pissed. really a big deal, like, to, to pull it's out. It's a major of, deal. I don't know how many people were there, but um, I'm certain they are in the thousands. And I felt bad for him because... He's really at the the top of his game right now. I mean, embarking on um, you know a solo career. Um, not a bad looking guy, might I add. Probably the the best looking on the show. I mean, on the uh, <laughs> of One Direction. On the ticket um, of One Direction. Yeah. Um, I mean, and very talented. All the produ- everyone wants to work with him. Um, the, the, everyone is just thrilled to shape him as an artist. Um, but also, hey, there's the there's that um, nervousness of, you know, being a one-hit wonder or just flopping right out of the gate. So I understand, but you know, I was rooting for him. I was like, come on, you can't let you can't let that get uh, can't let that get the best of you. I mean, well, I guess like the one good thing about this situation <clears throat> is that because of like I will say that I feel like the story has been kind of like sensationalized like I saw Gigi Hadid like she you know wrote him this really nice heartwarming message about like being human and stuff like that so there's a way that it's like sensationalized where I don't feel <laughs> anything like that he does career. as you would imagine real you know the media does sensationalize sensationalize I'm always telling people you know look at the motives things do get blown out of proportion of and he's young it kind of it kind of happens I mean hopefully it won't happen again and generally, if you yeah, pull I feel like out, as a PR person, like, I would kind of advise someone, like, um, okay, let's just say he had the flu. He had a stomach sickness. But, you know, so that fans will actually feel bad and, like, not want to riot <laughs> or whatever. Because I think if I heard that, you know, someone I paid money to go see um, stayed in the house because they were nervous, they'd be like, come on, get up, you pussy. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's I mean, I get it. Like, and I'm, I'm I would I would want to have hired somebody that would tell me to do the same. But then again, like you know, as a PR, you're person, on, it's being honest. Your client, yeah, you know your client. Like you know, this is not going to be a good idea if he goes out here. And also the other thing too is, you know, that could be a PR spin. Like it could have been anything. Like he really could have like probably shit his pants or something. Just didn't want nobody. To <laughs> You never know what really could happen. You just know what he said. So, like, now it's become this, this like, what's the best exit route here? Okay, say it's anxiety. Well, that's Let's better than, so, like, that's better than, you know, it could have been, <laughs> you know, you know, it could have been anything. You know what I mean? Like, it could have been anything. Like, I know I would, like, if that, you know, something bad happened to me or whatever, I didn't feel like sharing, I definitely would want to spin it in the best way so it could, you know, garner me, like, some positive in the negative. But, I mean, we never know what could have really happened. Could be that, could not be that. You never know. Right. And um, I wanted to uh, to touch on our uh, favorite original R&B train wreck, Mr. Bobby Brown. Um, he's Bobby also Brown. publishing a book. Yes, Bobby Brown. And so far, what we know that's going to be in the book is he has said that Whitney Houston is a bisexual. He's, he's confirmed it. Um, 
Now, many would ask, why would you want to stay with someone like that? I mean, it must have been a horrible marriage, but, you know, to the average guy, that's like, that's every guy's dream. It's like a two for one, you know? But, um, yeah. seriously, I mean, that's like, <laughs> that's pretty disrespectful. Um, I mean, unless you split on bad terms, um, should you come out and say things? And even then, if the party is dead, um, then you should, I, like, you know, you're married. You had a bond. Carry it to your grave. I, <laughs> I, how do you feel about coming out and, and spilling your, your dead ex's dirt? Um, oh, my God. <laughs> in, in the media. I, I'm really sitting here <laughs> like, put it in that perspective? Bobby, <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> I know, interesting question, right? Um, oh, man. Do we I see mean, any, is there any justification for this? Is there a positive, nah, there any nah. positive way for it? I mean, you have to be really completely broke to do something like that, in my opinion. And even... I mean, even me, I have my, I still have my morals now. You know, I've grown up some. I've, I've been petty, et cetera, um, in years past, We've in story, <laughs> in posting. All of us. Yes, I try really hard to be professional and whatnot and to, and to not take it there with certain things and certain people. And I just, I, I can't do that. The lady's dead, you know. She's and dead. even if I said something, you know. I'm not married to the woman. I wasn't married to the woman. You were. Don't you have any? Don't you have any type of a moral obligation? And you're Bobby but Brown. you know what? You have like, to be able to make. You can. You can be able to make some money in an honest way. I still believe in yeah. an honest way but, of making money. He could go on Fox News with Stacey. You know what? <laughs> You know what? I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? I didn't watch this. I did not watch the special, but not because I didn't want to. I was, like, home and, like, dealing with, like, graduation stuff, so I didn't get a chance to watch it. It is on, like, my uh, – I do plan to watch it. But one thing I thought was really interesting about, like, the whole premise of it, I, I was interested to, like, know, like, what his story was like or what, like, post-life was like for him after having lost his, you know, ex-wife and his daughter, like, in very similar ways and very public ways. I did kind of want to know, like, you know, where his mind was at or, like, you know, how devastating that must have been. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I just, I can't imagine. But, like, also, too, I did think it was, like, janky as hell that he would, like, you know, put some, like, who does that? Like, you know, I can't imagine. I mean, do you want to that's forever what? be known as an asshole? Because that, that's all you're going to do. It's too I mean, late. You know, you, the whole late. family's not going to like, you know, the family's not going to like you, the rest of the world. I mean, who is not a fan of Whitney Houston? Or if they weren't, they respected her. But, well, I, mean, I, mean, I don't know, according is, to Twitter. According to Twitter after she died, maybe not so much. But I'm just saying, like, you are officially the biggest asshole in the world for doing something like that. And then he tried to spin it. And he did try and put a positive on it. He said that if she were able to be with her best friend, um, Gail, and be in that relationship because they were in a secret one for years, um, that she probably wouldn't have died. And so she was doing things like cocaine, which she did on the night of their wedding, which she also shared, um, that she probably would still be alive today. So I don't know if that was a way of pandering to the gay community. Um, uh, I mean, no, but you bashed the gay like, icon, so that cancels each other out. <laughs> so I don't think that. Yeah, counts. nah, I I can't mess with that. I can't mess with that. I think he was there wrong for that. Bobby, Bobby, and I I believe in in uh, you know re in reinventing yourself, etc. Um, you are um, according to your bio, twenty seven, right? Yeah, 27. Okay, so a couple years apart. I just turned 30. Oh, oh happy lady. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you be getting real, right? Um, when I, actually, when I turned 27, um, I, um, I was working with this uh, government group, and they hadn't seen me in a couple of years. I have been, been with them in a while. And literally, everyone was asking me, like they said, you know, you're not getting any younger, et cetera, asking if you want to do such and such, you're not getting younger. And I think two people, like, that day said, and I was like, what, 
what is wrong with you people? Like, why are you talking to me like this? And the first time I heard that, or, or I heard 30 uttered from someone's mouth, it was during a family, um, some type of family event, and an in-law came up to me and she said, oh, you're almost 30. And I looked at her like she had just stabbed me. I mean, I had, no one had ever said that to me. And that was like the biggest insult. Almost 30. How dare you? That's, why would yeah. you, why would you say such a thing like that? Such a dis, disgusting, vile thing out of your mouth. I mean, hey, I mean, I mean <laughs> what's what so do? bad? Yeah, I mean, about two months before I like redecorated and I was doing spring cleaning and I was tossing out clothes. <laughs> I <laughs> started like yeah, you know, upping, exercising, but uh, yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of got over that. Um, but look, so like being a millennial, and I spent the like the beginning of my career through the recession. Um, you know, I, I was in real estate at the time, and I watched everyone around me. You know, people's careers tanking, they downsized homes and cars, etc. Um, you know, that didn't go well, so I left real estate alone, and I was doing um, um, IT, and this company wanted to move me to Kentucky. Um, the company bellied up. Um, first, I was like, 20, I'm 21. What the hell am I going to do in Kentucky? Screw you. Um, I worked for a real estate brokerage that um, that closed a um, – what, a real estate relocation company that closed? I had a mm-hmm. nice, mm-hmm. interesting series of events and a few publications that people gave up on. So, like, you can, you know, rebrand, et cetera. And I feel like I've done so in a positive manner. At least I hope that's how history will, will write itself. Um, as for him, I mean, you can continue your career. And he did get into country music. I don't know if you knew that or not. You know, I know, nope. not even, not, nope. I've never listened nope, because nope, nope. I just, I can't, I don't know if I want to damage. I, I mean, I, I have my, I want I just to don't want to remember hear him is my prerogative, Bobby. I don't want to imagine a country, Bobby. Nah, yeah, I'm I, never going to do it. <laughs> I, hey, I, I'm going to leave it at that. I, I like that response. I just, I don't want to hear it either. Boom. I'm never doing um, it. So look, uh, as for your career, I wanted to know, was there a, at what point did you get to that you um, realized you wanted to be a singer? Um, well, you know, for me, I was always musical, um, mm-hmm. but I didn't actually sing until I was like much older and uh, I was probably like maybe 17 or 18 and it just kind of happened by default because uh, my parents are pastors, and, you know, they just needed people to kind of help out at the church, and so I kind of just started okay. in that regard. And, you know, I just kind of took a liking to it, and, you know, my musical uh, inclination, I guess, like, you know, was heightened when I started singing. So I didn't actually start really in artistry, deciding I wanted to do that until, like, maybe 21 or 22. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think around that time is when I decided. I mean, better late than never. Um, Yeah. I've enjoyed uh, what I've heard so far. So, I mean, you know, we tend to hear these stories of of people like Candy Burris, et cetera, who, you know, they all went to the same fine arts school um, (laughs) in Atlanta. (laughs) Um, And often often in L.A., you know, all the actors, they all went to the same school. Um, Right, yeah. You know, and if you, you kind of feel like if you didn't start and get that type of a start, that it's just no, no, you stand no chance. But, um, but no, it doesn't have to be, doesn't, it doesn't have to be the story. Um, I mean, you know, some of the biggest success stories had, uh, you know, their interesting backgrounds, such as having to work and sing. I mean, you're not the only person who's had to do yeah. it. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And I mean, I, I like uh, I, I like uh, comfort, and I like you know knowing that a check is coming every couple of weeks, and you know I actually I mean I like to work and like I I just love being a, you know a, a musician an artist as well, um, so I think that like starting a little bit later definitely helped me in that regard as well because you know I have like tons of friends out here man that are like you know doing the, doing the art <laughs> full time and like you know 
just going from this place to that place and like, you know, I'm not waiting on this chick. I'm supposed to get paid by, you know, so and so for this, you know, two weeks going. You know, I don't want to deal with that. I can't deal with that. Yeah. Like, I cannot deal with that. So I think that, you know, going about it in the way that I have has really just helped me keep things realistic, keep a realistic view of like, you know, what's really going on. And uh And hey, keep know, in mind, Jay Z's first album wasn't until twenty six or twenty seven. That's the thing, yeah. That's the thing. That's the thing. The dude had so, a like, late start. Possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, so, a lot of people have had like crazy late starts. Keep in mind, he says that by him having that later start, I mean he was more mature, and he, um, for those who, in my opinion, who've had to uh, work for their career, as opposed to the American Idol generation, um, those yeah. of us who had to actually put in the work, you tend to respect it a lot more. You're not going to yeah. do something completely stupid and just ruin everything tomorrow. You know, yeah. because you had time and energy invested in it. And your work tends to be a little more mature. Um, you know, I, I'm, I think that you would have a lot more to say than a 17 or, or 18 year old. Yeah, and that's I mean, thing too, like, you know, I don't take anything away from that because I think that there are extremely talented people that are, like, younger. Like, I mean, I'd be amazed. Like, for instance, I just got into Chance the Rapper. And, yes. uh, I mean, he's, like, 23 years old. And his he had another record before this one that came out, like, a couple years ago, <laughs> which would have meant that he was, like, much younger when that was being created and put out. So, I mean, I mean, I don't take anything away from it, but I think for me personally, I think it's, like you said, like, it just helps me approach things in uh, a more, you know, a, a more mature space. And then, like, you know, I still, like, I'm kind of in the game, you know. There's, I'm still in the game, so I'm still, like, a part. I'm still, like, doing my thing. But it just right. helps, helps to keep things in a better perspective for me and keeps things, like, a little bit more balanced. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Yes. And um, what type of uh, – you've been in L.A. for a couple of years now. Um, how um, – like, what type of challenges do you have in, in – in working out there, I mean, you know, the competition's heavy. Uh, as you said, there are folks who are are, are doing th- who are doing it full time. Yeah. Um, just um, you know, like, what's what's some of the the toughest things you've had to to deal with as far as just the, you know, from the move to just working every day. Um, I mean, just definitely, I think my, my, my challenges have been like, you know, trying to stay motivated in a place where, you know, nobody really knows you. And since everybody's trying to do the same thing as you, seemingly nobody cares. Uh, oh, that's been kind of like, I know the feeling. Kind of like <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like, everybody's kind of out here to be an actor or to be an artist or to be something. And it's kind of like, because you're in an environment where everybody's trying to do the same thing. It's kind of like, yeah, like, you know, okay, what you're doing is cool, but, like, you know, I'm doing my own thing, too, if I can't really use you too much. I think that's kind of, like, right. been what it's, uh, what's been most difficult. And, you know, I just moving to a new place anyway and trying to, like, you know, develop an identity and, you know, create your circle, like, you know, that can always be kind of difficult. But, you right. know, in terms of, like, work and stuff, as far as that goes, like, my – I've been really just blessed to have, like, a nice base of people that kind of, like, bang with me. And, and my presence is – That's always important. Like, or, yeah. So, like, my presence has been mostly online anyway. So, it's, I could have been anywhere. And I think that I would have gotten, like, you know, support for, you know, things that I'm working on and things of that nature. I really do want to, like, uh, you know, penetrate the L.A. scene a little bit more and, like, kind of figure out what it has to offer because, I mean – even though there are there is like you know heavy competition and like all those things, I just feel like because I'm in this place where there are so many opportunities and so many ways to be plugged in, you know, you would, one would be doing themselves a disservice to not explore options. But you know, I keep like I said earlier, I keep it kind of low key. Like I'm not really like I'm not really sure that I'm chasing anything per se as much as I just want to create what I want to create. So that just makes it a much more easy for me. And I'm not really depending on it for a check either, not at this stage of the game. Like, I'm I'm still kind of, like, doing it, not as a hobby. Like, it's very serious for me. Like, I'm putting out right. records. Like, a, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm in the game. But it, it, it makes it – I'm able to approach it a little bit easier because, you know, it's not really, like – it's not, like, what I'm trying to use to eat. 
I have to com- I have to commend you for the the statement about not chasing a check because I'll say this I am I am very competitive I am almost dangerously competitive. Um, yeah, me too. I'm pretty bad. <laughs> so. I don't like um, to lose. <laughs> Yes, yes. That's that's one of the things I like, that I like about that's one of the things that I like about Mr. Trump. He says he's a winner. He wants to win. <laughs> that's one of way. I won't I won't solicit a comment from you on that one. But um <laughs> you know what? <laughs> but I am very competitive and again it is a business and um even though I'm not doing it one hundred percent full time, um it's pretty close. <laughs> I am technically yeah. self employed, so Eh, it's about the same, um, you know. Generally, work for me is like on contract basis because I try and have as much time as possible. Um, also into um, honing my craft, um, and which also, as I said before, I actually don't like being um, on air, and um, and people always get surprised when they really? hear me say that. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did AM radio in 2011. Um, 2011, 2012, and I off and on um, had my own show afterwards. Um, and I do another, I, I do another show with um, Breitbart.com. Um, so I do two shows a week, but um, okay. it's really pulling me out of my comfort zone. And again, in being competitive, um, hey, you know, you can't just pigeonhole yourself. I'm like, I've got to try other things. Um, and yeah. as far as the the being nervous, like the you know the Zayn Malik, I am. As I said, always pulling myself out of my comfort zone. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day, you know, I send media pitches or whatever, and I look at this and I'm like, Vonnie, do you really want to do this? <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. send. Um, public speaking as well. I, I went to Florida um, to uh, amongst a group of Republicans, mostly Jews, and I had the nerve to speak on gay marriage. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I was really asking for it. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> yes, but, um, you know, you've got to, I say, take things a step at a time, um, a day at a time. The As far as uh, working on your inspiration, I have other media friends that I uh, reach out to every day. Um, you know, some in the morning, like, hey, what's up? You know, just a little inspiration. Sometimes it can be a little tough. Um, and the same for different artists. And they say that if, likely if it wasn't for me, they probably wouldn't be doing anything at all. You know, I write folks, and I'm like, okay, get up. Get up and do something, something today. Something. I know it's a lot of competition out there, but it doesn't mean that you have to stop what you're doing. You create your own lane and um, try and beat that path as much as possible. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, that, I, I, <clears throat> I think that, uh, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, super competitive, but, like, I think for me, my perspective is a little bit different because, like I said, I'm not really chasing anything, per se, as much as I'm just doing what I want to do. You know what I mean? Like, I just kind of, like... And you come across as a humble like, person as well. I, yeah, like, I, I, I think I'm kind of, like, on just some chill stuff. Like, I think that when you do what you want to do, you're not really competing. Like, I do feel like competition because, I, of course, with every level that you're on, like, I know people that are kind of, like, indie artists that are kind of, like, on the, kind of on the same level as me in terms of just, like, their, their reach and, like, their brand and, like, kind of similar in their aesthetic or whatever. But I just kind of – I don't really feel competition in that way because I just feel like – you know, I'm not putting myself in. I, what, who am I really competing against but myself? Right. Like, my my goal is always to do better than I did last time. And that's kind of where it lies for me. And I know that kind of sounds corny. I mean, I'm being serious, though. Like, I think I that's good. Like, like, I need to take interview answer, interview tips from you because that was the perfect that was the perfect response. Now, I'm not, you know, Tanya Harding competitive. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a little level of competition. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, like I, I get it. It's I get a little it. something. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I, and, and, and the, that, again, that. the the part of not taking a check, and and you, you cited kind of Chance the Rapper as kind of inspiration. You know, he doesn't sell his music. I mean, yeah, I his know. work is crazy? free, and yeah, a lot of people do that, but not at his level. You don't, and that just that is a lot. 
to me, it's, it's, it's hard to even imagine because my whole political ideology is on based on capitalism and business and, and profit, etc. So it just, it doesn't even make sense to me. I mean, I get it. <laughs> yeah, but it's just I mean, no freaking way. I want to get paid. I want to get paid. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, like, this last project that I just did, like, you know, because I'm indie, I pretty much had to, like, pay for everything out of my own pocket and, like, you know. And that's kind, kind of, of a lot. Really I mean, your last just, video was very good well, mind you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I mean, even with that, like, I came out of my pocket, like, I had a, a, another friend to kind of, like, invest in so we can kind of get it done, the tapestry project. But, I mean, that stuff is not cheap. And, like, you know, I'm like, okay, people are asking me to make music. And, I mean, ultimately, if it's something that I want to do, if I want to, like, put myself in the game or whatever, I'm definitely going to have to invest in myself. But, like, y'all are going to give me this dollar twenty nine. Like, okay. I'm not apologizing <laughs> for it. Give, give me the money. I'll continue, but like, y'all are gonna give me this twenty nine because I, I mean I invested, and so like I mean I take my hat my hat off to like Chance and like other people like that that are just kind of like doing it like that. I mean when you, yeah, I think when you get to that level where you're kind of like working with whoever you want to work with, money's not really an issue really anyway. Because I feel like he's getting mind, something, like, of course, is, but Chance is, yeah, <laughs> Chance is indie, but like he's indie, but not like really like he's like indie with like a main mainstream platform a major platform you know what i mean like anytime like you get i'm covering him so he's definitely mainstream although i do i, I like yeah. giving chances to uh, i like giving chances to you know to other people i mean similarly i mean if i never got one i wouldn't um wouldn't be much of anywhere myself either now, yeah. do you have any advice that you would give future um musicians those who are coming up behind you Slash with you? Yeah, I mean, kind of just tying into what I was saying last time, a moment ago, just do what you want to do. Do do what you want to do for the sake of creating, uh, and, like, you can't lose. I mean, I know it's difficult in, in the industry where, you know, like, opportunities seemingly are, like, you know, far and few between, but just do what you want to do. And then also, like, I just don't – I try not to take too much advice from anybody. That's, like, another thing that I give, like, to people. Like, I don't take too much advice from people. I don't give too much advice either because I feel like, you know, anything's possible. Like, if anything can happen. Like, people have their own, like, people are giving you advice or, like, their thoughts based off of their perspective. Or, but, you know, very rarely do people see the vision that you have for yourself or, you know, see what you see. Nobody really sees what you see. It's your vision. And so, like, sometimes the way that, it comes off or it's interpreted can kind of, kind of be misguided. People give you their advice and things based off of that. But I just say, like, just do what you want to do. If you think it's good, if you think it's right, do that. And, you know, let's hope for the best. But, I, I, you know, that's pretty much it. Just do what you want to do. Don't take too much advice from people. Like, people don't be knowing what they're talking about half the time. <laughs> like, you know, just do what you do. You. And I want to leave a last piece of advice. Um, I remember Mariah Carey said that, um, when her career had gone into the dumpster, um, this is going to be the nice word I want to give, um, she said that um, everyone was giving her advice, you, know, you need to do this, you need to do adult music, you know, you need to, oh, but you need to do more club stuff. And she said, you know, there, was con uh, there were um, comments made on her attire, on her clothing, her appearance, et cetera, all this stuff. Then people said, she's 30. They were like, she needed to retire at 30, which looking back at this, hey, you know, I just turned 30. And I'm like, that's a pretty harsh statement <laughs> to be told so to go away right. at age. Right. Um, right. But she said that she allows people to speak um, in line with their expertise. If you are a stylist, then you can say something on clothing. Stylists, does not, stylists do not speak on vocals. <laughs> stylists do not that's true. speak on what type of music I should do. I can't, it's because it becomes clamor. You hear all these words. You can't erase it out of your head. And you're going to be thinking about all that when you get on stage. Do I look, you know, maybe the, the stylist said that I shouldn't have sung this song. And you repeat that statement to yourself. And it sounds pretty effing stupid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Take but things with like a grain of salt. That, yes. 
but think of all the people that are like, you know, their expertise is music and like, you know, like I think I recently read the story or like a bit on L.A. Reid and he's like saying that he passed up on somebody. I can't remember who it was, but he like passed up on somebody major and that person went on to be like, you know, amazing person or whatever. I can't remember. But I'm just saying yeah. like, there's a lot of people like it's all subjective really. Like, you know, there are so many people that are like have influence and power that it's just, it's still subjective though. Like, you know, you have a, what makes somebody powerful and successful is like they have like a success rate you know, like, you know, we, we, you know, Diddy is successful because he had a success, like his success ratio was very high. Like he, he just had an eye, but there are, I'm sure plenty of people that he came in contact with that was like, no, I'm not fucking with that. And then they went on to do whatever they did. And like, you know, they were successful in their own right. So, I mean, because everything is all subjective, I, mean, mm-hmm. I just feel like, you know, if you, if you think, if you're talking with it, you think it's right, do that, you know, try it. Why not? And we change as artists so much that really, for the most part, anything that you're doing right now that you think is right, you're probably not going to be doing it six months to a year anyway. You should be. Yeah, you, you, have professional, <laughs> you have professionals around you and always trust yourself. You know, that is yep. generally what, um, that's kind of what Mr. Donald Trump has said. He said that everyone said he wasn't going to make it to a certain point. There were all the predictions about what was going to happen, which has generally been wrong going back about to Trump. The, Yes, <laughs> because, <laughs> but, you know, okay. even ideology aside, but as far as the, the, just the sentiment of trusting in yourself. And his thing is he feels like, I got this far um, in spite of anything that he believes in based on um, my own merits and in, in trusting myself. And if he, you know, tanks tomorrow, that it is something to be said about um, – his own instincts and just how far it's uh, far it's gotten him. Yeah, that was that was a great comparison. I know. Um, so look, before we go, and I totally held you hostage for like much longer than we were supposed to. Um, and I was just getting really good with uh, with <laughs> recently. Dang, I ain't um, good, man. So, um, where can people find you on social media? People can find me on social media on Instagram, official Smith. Twitter, Official Smith underscore, SoundCloud, Official Smith. Everything's Official Smith. Okay, folks. And as I said, I think that Smith uh, took me aback a little bit. I'm going to listen, and I think I'm going to take some interview pointers from him. Um, this show is brought to you by <laughs> our parent company, VM3 Media, your source for your communications and media needs. I like to thank um, – I was going to thank our uh, – the other writer <clears> – <throat> He never made it. That's okay. Still love you, never Muhammad. Um, <laughs> but um, thanks to our special guest, Smith. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you guys you for having me. And make sure you guys check out my single, Tapestry. It's out. It's uh, available everywhere. Uh, also, the visual Tapestry is available on YouTube. So just find me on social media, and you'll see the links for everything, and let me get the thing popping. All right, awesome. And for the latest in celebrity news and entertainment, make sure you go to poplist.com. <laughs> um, one second. Great. So now I get to okay. have editing to do because um, I can't figure out how to stop. Right.